Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64Elite.com, and today I want to show you how you can do something really cool in Photoshop, all right? This is a way that you can add texture to blown out waterfalls. Very similar to a tutorial where I showed you how to add texture to blown out clouds, now you can do it with blown out waterfall areas. Sometimes it happens to us, our exposure goes a little bit too long, and we have a beautiful landscape photograph otherwise, but that one waterfall spot just looks horrible like this one okay we've got this beautiful waterfall but it looks like a white streak that's just splitting my image in half so here's our before and here is our after so we added a little bit of texture to that waterfall so it looks like a little bit more of a natural stream of water rather than just a big white splotch there's a lot of steps involved in this however i've also created an action so watch this and then you'll learn how to use the action so that all you have to do is press play and you can be fixing your waterfall images very easily also All right, so a couple weeks ago, I showed you how to do this blowout texture thing where you could fill in clouds with some detail where detail was not. And I had a question from somebody that said, hey, that'd be great if you could do the same thing with waterfalls. How would you do it with waterfalls? And my response to them was, you know, just go ahead and use the, um, the render fibers instead of render clouds. And I thought it'd be a good idea to show that tutorial and also give you an action, okay? So I know a lot of these steps are not gonna be able to be memorized and that's fine, but uh, you can download the action on the website. There's a link here on YouTube. If you're on F64 Academy, there's going to be a button that says download the actions and you're free to use these as you see fit. Here's the deal. What we need to do first is press D to default our colors to black and white. Okay. So once our colors are defaulted to black and white, we can create a new layer and press shift F5 and fill that with 50% gray. Now we're going to come here, go to filter, and we're going to go to render and we're going to render fibers. Okay, now the variance and the strength here, in the action it even stops, the variance and strength here are going to be based off of the type of waterfall that you're working with. The type of waterfall I was working with here was a straight drop. So it made it very difficult to photograph because there was no rocks in the way to kind of create some detail in between. But what that happens is it looks like my image is being split by a white piece of fiber, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this variance a little bit here until we get a good streak like that and then maybe decrease the strength a little bit so it looks like water falling so you can see this kind of has like a paper fiber type of texture to it whereas these are these really big thick streaks i'm going to go with something right about right here and press ok but this will be dictated by the type of waterfall that you have okay so i'm gonna press ok and now i've got fibers rendered what I need to do is just double click this layer. And right here, we're gonna to go to blend if. We're basically going to protect our underlying layers, shadow areas, so that this really only hits our highlight areas in our photograph. So if we move this over all the way over here like this, we can start to see where this just starts to affect our highlight areas. And I'll bring it all the way over and then press Alt or Option to split this and feather it in so it just nice and neatly feathers into our highlight areas. Now you can see these fibers are all over the side of the hill too. It's not that big of a deal. We can fix that in a second. One thing that will help you see that is if right here, if we go to Color Overlay and change that to something like Magenta, that shows us right there all the places where these fibers are. So it would behoove me to actually click here on this mask and paint out any of these areas here with black that I don't want these fibers to affect. And if you have the action and you press play on the action, it does give you a mask so that you can go ahead and just start painting away on those areas that you don't want affected in magenta like that. Okay. And then what I'm going to do with that is if I go ahead and drop the opacity down to about 20%, you'll start to see that magenta start to get a little bit lighter and then we can turn that color overlay off. So when we zoom in here, we see our, our waterfall now has some texture to it. The only problem is it's going straight down and I need it at a slight angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this layer here by pressing Command or Control T and then I'll press Control and Spacebar to zoom myself out a little bit here and rotate this until those fibers, as I look at this here, those fibers start to get the same angle as my waterfall. And at this point, I can also move it around until I get a good chunk of fibers that fits a little bit better, like maybe this chunk of fibers, and then just rotate that until it fits and press okay. 
Now on that also, I'll probably need to go down to this base area where the water meets the waterfall meets the water and paint with black on that area too. Maybe just get a little bump right there so that that actually does have a little bit of a blowout to it because it looks pretty natural. And that's about all we have to do. There's one more option that we can do that's actually included in the action also. If we go to a curves adjustment layer, we can press Alt or Option so that, that curve only affects what's going on below it. That's called a clipping mask, okay? So we clip this curves adjustment layer into our fibers and now from here we can increase and decrease the amount of contrast that's coming through in those fibers to maybe match some of the other areas where we might have that fibrous texture from our waterfall falling to the ground. So here's the before and here's the after. You can see in that after image, we actually have a much better uh, waterfall look here because here we just have this white strip that just separates my image. But here, we actually have some texture in those areas to fill in that gap of white to make it look like a more realistic waterfall. So if you download the action, you go into your actions folder, you press play on this option right here, it's going to open you up in the fiber section. And that's so that you can get the right variance and strength for the waterfall that you're working on. We'll just go ahead and press OK right here. And then it's going to set you up with that color overlay over there like we just showed you with the magenta and then also with that waterfall contrast. It's going to be up to you at this point to make sure that your waterfall fibers match the direction of your waterfall. So press Command or Control T so you can rotate and transform and free transform that fiber into your waterfall. So once again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy. If you like this, please comment, share it, tell a friend, and subscribe. Because if you subscribe, you'll get updates from YouTube telling you that a new video from F64 Academy is available, and you'll be able to watch it. And sometimes you'll see it faster than someone will on my email list. However, if you hop over to F64 Academy and get on the email list, you'll get email when I have updates to my products and when new blog posts hit the website. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. Please implement this, download the action, and, and start turning your blown out highlights in your waterfalls, happens to the best of us, into more robust textured areas that don't look quite as bad like this one did before. Thanks again. Have a great one.